Joining me now, McKay Coppins, author of this brand new book that just came out today, Romney, A Reckoning, about Utah Senator Mitt Romney and the former Republican presidential nominee. McKay, thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Thanks for having me. So what has been your reaction to the reception so far? Because this book has really gotten a lot of attention even before it came out. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think a lot of the early media coverage, certainly in Washington, has been focused on some of the more withering quotes from Mitt Romney about some of his fellow Republicans. Um, and I understand that, you know, that's just sort of how the modern media cycle works. Um, but I hope that people, when they read the book, will see that there's some context to that. You know, some of the comments that Romney made were uh, from years ago, written in his private journals, which he he later shared with me while I wrote this biography. Some of the comments are, are things that he said to me uh, more recently. But, you know, overall, what they illustrate is a man who is profoundly disappointed in some of the leaders of his party. Uh, over the last several years, he's grown increasingly isolated in Washington uh, because he didn't acquiesce to Donald Trump and um, his brand of Republicanism, while many of his colleagues did. And while Romney, you know, told me that he can understand if people disagree with him, what what really bothers him is that for for years now, he's listened to some of his colleagues in the Republican caucus tell him in private that they agree with the things that he said about Donald Trump, uh, but that they can't say the same things because they're worried about re-election. And I think that kind of hypocrisy in Romney's view is what drove him ultimately to uh, cooperate with me for this book. What stood out most to you as you wrote this? Because it looks like this was a multi-year effort and talking to Mitt Romney and reading his journals and his texts and all of that. But what stood out most to you as you went through this process? I think what I found most compelling was just how open and candid and, uh, and, and you know, transparent Romney is being, not just about some of the stories he's he's been there for, some of the things he's seen behind the scenes, but about his own mistakes over the course of his life and career. Um, you know, the subtitle of the book is A Reckoning. And I, I really think that that captures what Senator Romney has been going through over the last couple of years. We would, I would go over to his townhouse in Washington, D.C. sometimes and uh, stay there for hours where he would just kind of be rehearsing in his head uh, various moments in his career where he was faced with an ethical problem or a compromise that he had to make uh, to win an election. And, you know, uh, he he's really grappling with how uh, he might be complicit, uh, at least in part, in uh, this kind of precarious moment in American politics. At the same time, I think, you know, he, he has been known in the last few years for taking these courageous, lonely stands where he was often the only Republican to, for example, vote for the impeachment of Donald Trump or uh, to speak out against some of the excesses in his own party. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that readers will take away from the book that uh, those courageous stands are something we should expect from all of our leaders. It shouldn't be an exception. We should expect our elected leaders to follow their conscience, uh, even when it's unpopular. We've seen some reaction so far to the book, including from Donald Trump, the former president. Uh, your thoughts on what he said, and and we've also heard from some here in Utah, some Republicans who uh, are still upset with Romney and and don't like the book or or what he had to say in it. Sure. Well, look, I mean, I, I did not expect Donald Trump to like this book. I don't think uh, Senator Romney did either. Um, and as for those other Republicans who are, are critical of him and uh, critical of the decisions he's made, look, I get it. I think that people can reasonably disagree, for example, on whether President Trump should have been convicted in his Senate impeachment trials. Um, and I think Mitt Romney believes that, too. Uh what I hope, what I would say to those Republicans in Utah who are still upset with him is take some time to read this book and see the the process he went through to reach, for example, that conclusion on impeachment or some of the other conclusions he's come to in the last few years. I think what you'll find is somebody who's very conscientious and, and diligent and really tried to make the right decision. This isn't about, you know, moral vanity or preening for the press. 
Uh, he was really, you know, agonized over, uh, he really agonized over how to vote in that impeachment trial, for example. And uh, he ultimately decided that he would do what he thought was right, even though he knew he'd get bl blowback in Utah. Um, I, I think part of what I, I hope to accomplish with this book is show the behind the scenes uh, process that led him to this moment of reckoning. And, uh, and I think that readers will find that he approached it in good faith. It kind of brings up this theme of going with your conscience, even when it disagrees with your party. Is there a place in politics, do you think, for someone in the future whose conscience goes against where their party wants them to? I certainly hope so. Um, you know, when Mitt Romney speaks to groups of young people, students, and they ask him for advice, one of the first things he says to them these days is, don't sacrifice your principles at the altar of integrity. It's not worth it, believe me. Um, and, you know, I, I think that that is good advice. And, you know, I, I hope that the, the lesson of Mitt Romney's career, and especially these last few years, is that, uh, you know, ultimately, uh, if you're an elected official, if you're a political leader, um, you should care more about what you, it says in your obituary, what your kids and grandkids will remember about you, maybe less about the next election cycle. What do you think Mitt Romney's legacy will be as he moves into this phase we call retirement? <laughs> well, first of all, I think he's going to struggle to uh, to uh, adapt to retirement. He is a, a restless guy, and I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, continue to hear from him. But I, I do think his legacy will be that of somebody who um, you know, found his moral courage at a moment when polarization and division were taking over the country. And uh, I, I think that, you know, at various points in his life and career, he hasn't always lived up to his ideals. I think he would be the first to admit that. And I write about those moments in the book. Uh, but in the last few years, whether you agree with him or disagree with him, he really has tried to do what he thought was right. And I think that's how he'll be remembered. Well, one more question for you. I bought this book today at the King's English Bookshop here in Salt Lake City, and I understand there's an event coming up uh, next month early. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that. You'll be here in Utah actually talking about this book. I will be November 2nd uh, for that, that Friday night. I'll be, or Thursday night, I'm sorry. I'll be uh, in conversation with Doug Fabrizio from KUER, and uh, we'll be talking about uh, Mitt Romney, his legacy, his career, some of the stories in this book. And there are some uh, pretty jaw-dropping moments that I recount in this book that uh, I think readers will uh, will be interested to hear some of the behind the scenes. I hope people will come check it out and I'll be talking to people and signing books afterward. And I think the bookshop has uh, information on their website about it and uh, how they can sign up to, to come and et cetera. So uh, anything else, McKay Coppins, about this book that is uh, the talk of the political world right now? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that it's the talk of the political world. I just now want people to actually read it. That's the uh, <laughs> that's the trick to go from the uh, the Twitter fodder to uh, to actually taking some time to read. I, I think people will be surprised if they spend some time in this book. All right. Not just the excerpts then, the whole thing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> thank you so much, McKay, for your time. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you.